sharing. Hi, I'm Tom McKay. I'm your host for 3D Politics, all the exciting stuff going on here in Oklahoma. David Van, David Oldham, and David D'Ambroso here with all of the top news in Oklahoma. We're going to follow up with where we started or dropped off last time. Uh, David, tell us about this double jeopardy story well, at the federal level. Well, actually, we didn't. We weren't talking about it last time, but it was what I went, what I got home to. The news was a cease Amazon news, and the this Supreme week. Court. The Supreme Court ruled that you may be in danger of life and limb for a single crime by multiple sovereigns. In other words, and what they're calling sovereigns are governments, state governments or federal government. So the Fifth Amendment specifically says that you cannot be tried more than once or be put in danger. A person cannot be put in danger more, more than once in danger of life and limb. Yeah, so for the We all saw the future. <laughs> and and so so what has happened though is the the federal government has come out with hate crime legislation and uh, legislation of their own for various crimes. And if they don't like the kind of punishment that you're getting, they will bring their own charges um, for federal hate crime or other federal crime charges. Well, what has happened is is Gamble was arrested for drug and gun charges. The gun charge was legitimate to the degree that he was a felon. And they, he, was, he was sentenced to a year in prison. Well, the state came back, or the federal government came back and got him four years. So he was, he was tried twice. For the same? For the same crime. But, but and, and he, he argued that he should not be held to account for the other three years in prison. In federal prison and yeah, the Supreme Court has now come back you. well but the thing is that, that the state had already either the state had already had already Pretty sentenced nice. him and and so forth but he was yet tried again so we have two trials of fact we have and and the Seventh Amendment says that only one jury can only that fact stands so if the state had held him innocent we've seen in other cases I don't have the case in front of me not but guilty but they were held not guilty by the state, but then guilty by the feds, and they go to federal prison. So, so this case is, should anger anybody that, that wants to have a measure of rights of help, because now the sky's the limit. They can do whatever they want, just pass some legislation, throw you in prison for whatever my, time. My question on this is, not only, sh in my opinion, should we not have two trials, we should not even have duplicate laws. Exactly. Because when the original 13 states decided to make this child called the federal government, this right. commonwealth, uh, much like the European Union is today, that's essentially what they were doing was trying to pull together resources. They specifically said, these are your uh, authorities, federal government, mm -hmm. the rest belongs to the states. Correct. Powers. Yes. They don't have, they don't have, they don't have rights. But this was a new so, idea in America. This was a new American idea. So, Correct. unless it's an interstate gun running kind of scenario where interstate kicks in or something like that, it really should be up to the state to decide what the laws in their state are regarding it's quite it's awfully well, convenient that interstate commerce governs everything so well it and, always and comes in. that's the that's <laughs> the whole <laughs> twist in the whole thing is is first it starts with and and it's a new twist in terms of the last 100 years is that the federal government can prevent interstate trade and prohibit it and that somehow is legitimate without a constitutional yeah. amendment because we have rights to to wait and you mean to in, trade intrastate within that state and interstate yeah the interstate i can understand the regulating interstate well, commerce right? but remember regulation cannot be prohibition right. otherwise it's not gotcha. regulation why is that gotcha. <laughs> Inside joke, folks. You'll catch yeah, on. You'll, you'll get the joke. Yeah, okay. Bell here, yeah. But, but was, for people, since we have that break, for people who are just joining us, especially that one, uh, what state? What? Where's this uh, case uh, out of the the case we're talking about? Uh, 
Gamble, I think it was Alabama. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, not only was he found guilty the federal at the state level, federal government didn't think that the state jury gave him enough time, right? Yeah, I'm, so, I'm trying to remember if he act, if he pled or if he actually um, had a jury trial. But uh, but either way, he pled in in federal court, expecting to be able to um, appeal and get the the time overturned uh, under double jeopardy because he mm. was definitely put in danger of life and limb twice because he was yeah. sentenced to one so year. For he has to appeal court. to the federal government for that because it was the federal charge okay. that it was the double. Right. And and so he it went to the Supreme Court. They then turned around on a 6-2 decision. And believe it or not, Gorsuch, who I have really liked so far of everything I've seen of him, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg got it right. Yeah. Um, wow. they, they were the two that got it right. I don't believe that Broke because I don't off. believe that she's still alive. No, no. Oh, oh. Justice Thomas is being widely acclaimed. For his 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 separate but consenting opinion to the majority, yeah. and that was because he brought up stare decisis. I mean, this is a term we should all know. Stare decisis is Latin for what has come before, and and what it what it means is so that they it rely. Is it, it is the laziest <laughs> doctrine in all of government, and it's essentially the most powerful doctrine. It it, it, it is before the court because what they do is they rely on precedent well, for yeah. any everything else, and yeah. and it's the well, way that they always push. flung dung. So we got to continue exactly. Well, you know what? It really makes their job difficult because they have to wheedle around. And it's kind of like going to church and hearing some guy lie about the Bible up in the pulpit, right? And how much work they have to work to get around the actual text. Right. Seems, well, that's pretty easy to me. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Hard. Okay, so here's an unintended outcome that prosecutors actually are not going to like. Because if a prosecutor can work out a deal, let's say in some conspiracy thing, if they can get one guy to flip on the rest of them and turn state's witness and in exchange they offer him a sweet deal, well now that guy's going to think, of, wait a minute, I might get a sweet deal in state court, <laughs> but federal court's going to come yeah. after me because I'm going to be admitting on the stand everything I did. You better hold back just a little bit for that second sweet deal, guys. So it's going to make it's going to make it a lot harder to prosecute. You follow what I'm saying? Oh, I totally. I mean, it's very interesting. Not, yeah. It means that you you have to get a lawyer that is familiar with federal law as well as state in order to be able to fight your state case because very likely mm -hmm. the um, the feds could get involved and so any advice you get has to include all this extra unconstitutional yeah. behavior. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that means the word constitutional has been evoked. <laughs> invoked. Invoked. Yes. And I've gotten pretty, I've done pretty well not to. <laughs> it's pretty good. We're, we're at like so far. 10 minutes or something. Like that. Oh, wow. As you know, David is the author of the website on constitutional grounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to go there every time you hear a bell from now on. Yeah, that's not that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's right. Wait, the Russians again? Yeah. Pa 